so now we are going to read about the different pathotypes of the e coli these pathotypes are sometimes asked as short notes separately like they will give you to write a short note on epec or write a short note on etec or write a short note on infantile diarrhea like this they can give you uh, different scenarios in the e, uh, short notes section and you have to write those answers so for knowing about all these uh, pathotypes of the e coli it becomes very much clumsy okay so i have made a table here so that it becomes easy for you to remember about all of those uh, e coli pathotypes all of those diarrheogenic e coli pathotypes okay and you can uh, write about any one of them very easily by remembering this one table so first of all talking about the enteropathogenic e coli which causes the infantile diarrhea so the first point to keep in mind is that the enteropathogenic e coli is non toxigenic and it is non toxigenic and it is non invasive as well non toxigenic and non invasive okay now come to the pathogenesis so whenever they ask you about epec write a short note on epec then you have to write first the uh, it a small uh, introduction point about epec then you have to write the virulence factors remember i have told you about the virulence factors in my first lecture on e coli the same virulence factors fit, fit here also just you uh, you have to avoid the toxin part because to toxin is not released by epec okay toxin can be included in the ehec and etec section okay in the ehec and the etec e coli otherwise in all other e coli whenever you are writing short note just write the uh, surface antigens I write about the surface antigen virulence factors okay so first of all give a small introduction then write about the virulence factors then write about what are the infections that it can cause so epec at, as it is a diarrheogenic pathotype so it will cause diarrhea only okay so it will cause diarrhea uh, it causes mostly the infantile diarrhea and then write about the pathogenesis okay and then at last the diagnosis part so let's see how does enteropathogenic e coli causes the diarrhea or what is the pathogenesis or what is the mechanism of action of the epec so the pathogenesis of epec is that it attaches to the intestinal mucosa by bundle forming pili so it has bundle forming pili by which it attaches to the intestinal mucosa and causes the effacement of the mucosa remember this is a very important point effacement of mucosa is caused by the epec epec causes effacement of the mucosa and as there is effacement it causes increase in the secretion from the gut wall into the gut lumen so there is secretory diarrhea starts uh, there is secretory diarrhea starting after the infection of the epec so you if you remember that a minimal change disease in case of uh, nephrology where uh, the there is effacement of the basement membrane effacement of the podocytes so there also there is after effacement there is release of the you know proteins into the uh, urine so here also there is secretion of the diarrhea after the secretion uh, of the you know uh, electrolytes and the fluids into the gut lumen after the effacement of the mucosa so that is the pathogenesis of the epec and the manifestation as i told earlier also that it causes watery diarrhea in infants then what is the uh, uh, diagnosis so diagnosis i have uh, described the diagnosis in detail in the e coli part 2 so after writing that 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 part of the diagnosis that part of diagnosis is just to diagnose e coli but that will not help you in diagnosing the pathotypes of the e coli for diagnosing pathotypes of e coli you have to use the epec o antisera so if it causes uh, agglutination then you can say that it is a epec uh, type of pathotype of e coli that is it is a enteropathogenic pathotype of e coli so in this way you have to write the whole short note or whole answer of the epec first we have to give a little introduction that it is non toxigenic non invasive e coli it causes infantile diarrhea then what is the pathogenesis then you have to write the manifestation and then you have to write about whole of the diagnosis of the e coli and then at last you have to write the epec o antisera for diagnosis of epec next we have the enterotoxigenic e coli the enterotoxigenic e coli which is toxigenic by name itself you can know that it is toxigenic but it is non invasive non invasive okay so it causes the traveler's diarrhea remember i had told you et t means traveler okay et t means traveler so etc is a causing traveler's diarrhea 
now t also means two remember t means two two means two toxins so one is the heat uh, labile toxin and the heat stable toxin so heat labile toxin increases the camp by activating adenylate cyclase and heat stable toxin increases cyclic gmp how to remember this whenever you are you write yes okay so whenever you write yes just tilt it slightly and it becomes g okay just tilt it slightly and it becomes g so by that you can remember that heat stable toxin increases cgmp increases the cgmp okay so what happens after increment in the cmp or cgmp so after the increase there increase there is increased movement of waters and electrolytes in the gut lumen that causes diarrhea okay so it causes watery diarrhea in both infants and the adults by t here also you can remember it causes diarrhea in two two means one in infants and the other one is in adults now one thing to keep in mind is that epec causes infantile diarrhea that does not mean it cannot cause diarrhea in adults it can also cause in the uh, adults also it can also cause diarrhea in adults also but uh, you know the infantile diarrhea is more common with the epec that's the meaning of saying that it causes infantile infantile diarrhea okay so next one is the diagnosis part so you have to write the whole part of the diagnosis i have described in e coli part 2 then you have to write how to diagnose the pathotypes for the diagnosis of the pathotype of the uh, e coli diarrhea pathotype of e coli you have to detect the toxins okay toxin that is heat level toxin and the heat stable toxin those can be detected with the latex agglutination test or by elisa secondly you can diagnose this uh, this pathotype by pcr also na? because these genes which are producing this heat stable and the heat level toxin those will be present in only in the etec the enterotoxigenic pathotype of e coli so once you diagnose those genes which are producing the heat level and the heat stable toxin then you can definitely say that it is a enterotoxigenic pathotype of e coli so these two things can help in diagnosis of this entero patho enterotoxigenic e coli enterotoxigenic e coli okay now comes to the Come to the next uh, E. coli that is entero invasive E. coli that is the entero invasive E. coli that is E. I. E. C. the entero invasive E. coli so how does this causes infection remember here also you have to write the uh, virulence factors first first introduction then virulence factors and then the pathogenesis so pathogenesis is that it invades the epithelial cells by virulence marker antigen so it is invading into the epithelial cells by the virulence marker antigen that it possesses and that causes due to that invasion there occurs the bloody diarrhea so what is the manifestation manifestation is dysentery and there is ulceration dysentery and ulceration in the gut wall in the gut wall due to that ulceration there occurs bleeding and that causes dysentery so it causes cigella like manifesto in cigella also there occurs bloody diarrhea uh, or dysentery so it is similar to cigella so that's why it is also called as cigellosis okay because it mimics cigella so it is cigellos it is also sometimes referred to as cigellosis or cigella like manifestation okay so that is the manifestations of the infection of by eiec next how are we going to diagnose this pathotype of in, uh, e coli so this invasive pathotype of e coli can be detected by elisa by detecting the vma and vma that is virulence marker antigen because that will be present only in this pathotype of e coli then serine test can be done serine test is positive in case of entero invasive e coli what is serine test so in the serine test what do we do is that we put a broth of the bacteria into the uh, eyes of some animals okay so uh, if there occurs conjunctivitis or in that animal that means serine test is positive so it indicates the invasiveness of the bacteria and this test is positive in case of eiec and uh, listeria and the cigella these are the three bacteria which shows this test positive so if serine test is positive that means we can say that it is a entero invasive e coli other than that it is non lactose fermenting please keep in mind it is non lactose fermenting e coli generally we see that all the e coli are lactose fermenter they produce pink colonies on the macong agar but this eiec does not produce pink colonies on the e, uh, macong agar okay they produce pale colonies on the macong agar okay then we can also uh, demonstrate the invasion the invasion property of this entero invasive e coli by growing them on the hela or the hep2 cell line hela hep2 cell line when we grow on these cell lines 
then this bacteria causes invasion in those cell lines so that indirectly helps in diagnosis of the intero invasive e coli okay so these are the different uh, ways by which we can diagnose this invasive pathotype of the e coli next uh, in our discussion is the intero hemorrhagic e coli so intero hemorrhagic e coli as i discussed earlier also that it produces sega like toxin or the verocytotoxin so how does that act so uh, in the uh, virulence factors part in the e coli part one i had described about this verocytotoxin toxin that it inhibits the 60s ribosome so due to that inhibition there is decreased protein synthesis and due to decreased protein synthesis there was damage to the mucosal epithelium that leads to diarrhea okay but one more mechanism of action of this verocytotoxin toxin is that it causes capillary microangiopathy and this is most important okay please remember this that the capillary microangiopathy by the verocytotoxin is the most important way of action or the mechanism of action of the verocytotoxin due to this capillary microangiopathy there occurs hemorrhagic colitis there occurs the hemorrhagic colitis which is a manifestation of the intero hemorrhagic e coli that is nothing but the bloody dysentery sorry bloody diarrhea that is also called as dysentery okay and i had also told that it also causes the hemolytic uremic syndrome that was one particular type of strain of intero hemorrhagic e coli that was o157 o157 okay that was o157 h7 okay o157 h7 causes this hemolytic uremic syndrome so these are the manifestation of the intero hemorrhagic e coli then how are we going to diagnose this so once you diagnose the e coli then you have to diagnose the pathotype okay so for diagnosis of the hemorrhagic pathotype of e coli you can demonstrate the cytotoxicity you can demonstrate the cytotoxicity in the vera or the hela cell line so once you diagnose uh, once you demonstrate that cytotoxicity then it becomes clear now it becomes uh, uh, you know yeah, it becomes very evident that it is a it is a verocytotoxin producing e coli and verocytotoxin producing e coli is only one that is intero hemorrhagic e coli then you can uh, also demonstrate the toxin by elisa okay this verocytotoxin can be demonstrated by elisa then the pcr can be used to detect the gene which is producing the verocytotoxin so that will also help in diagnosis of this pathotype of the e coli remember whenever you are writing diagnosis then first you have to writing you have to write the diagnosis of e coli then you are going to diagnose the pathotype of e coli na without diagnosing e coli you are going to diagnose the pathotype of e coli this is not possible you have to first diagnose e coli and that is described in the e coli part 2 lecture okay and uh, after diagnosing that it, yes it is e coli then you have to diagnose whether it is uh, uh, what is the pathotype of uh, e coli so for the diagnosis of pathotype you have to use this test for diagnosis of the pathotype of e coli so if these tests come out to be positive then it is an intero hemorrhagic e coli okay so that's all for the ehc now comes the now next is the intero aggregative e coli so it produces a toxin that is called as east 1 intero aggregative heat stable toxin 1 so uh, it uh, there is a proposed mechanism of action of this east 1 uh, toxin that is increase in the cgmp but this is not confirmed this is just a proposed mechanism and that's why i have written here this proposed mechanism only it is not confirmed that it increases cgmp or not so this east 1 increases cgmp and just similar to uh, this that cgmp causes increase movement of the increase movement of the uh, water and the electrolytes into the gut lumen and that causes the diarrhea so here also the manifestation is the watery diarrhea that can be acute or chronic and how are we going to diagnose this intero aggregative e coli so first diag after diagnosing e coli then you have to diagnose the pathotype so for diagnosis of pathotype you can we can use the toxin detection by elisa or latex agglutination test we can detect this east one toxin and once the east one toxin is detected that means indirectly we can say that it is a intero aggregative e coli or we can use pcr directly to detect the gene which is producing this east one toxin and that will help us in diagnosing this pathotype of e coli which is eaec that is intero aggregative e coli so that's all for all the patho types of the diarrheogenic e coli okay all the pathotypes of the diarrheogenic e coli and just uh, if you remember this table it is it becomes very easy for you to remember all the pathotypes and you can answer all the short notes uh, whatever asked in the uh, exams so 
even if they ask you infantile diarrhea then you can describe this epec even if they ask the travelers diarrhea you can describe this etec very safely but this is not that the travelers diarrhea is only caused by etec enterotoxinic e coli rather this travelers are caused by uh, some other organisms also but even if you uh, describe this enterotoxinic e coli that is enough at uc level isn't it so that's all for this uh, uh, different pathotypes of the uh, uh, diarrhea genic e coli okay